Hi, Stitchers. Hi. I'm Keisha. I'm Laura. Welcome to the Pattern Queens episode 81. Woo. Today is Sunday, February 6, 2022. And this is a channel about cross stitch and friendship and rambles and lots and lots of shenanigans and lots of life events. <laughs> <laughs> and this is also about what happens when one of us finds out that you can change the nicknames in our messenger chat. Yes. So if you weren't aware, if you have Facebook Messenger, you can change people's names to nicknames. <laughs> so Lara is now officially the Rambler and I am the Shenanigator. So, <laughs> and that's how it shows up whenever she sends a message. So it took us both a couple of days to adjust to what, what are the new nicknames? <laughs> <laughs> and mine was so much a, where did my chat with Keisha go? I can't find it. <laughs> Oh yeah, she's the shenanigator and I'm the one who changed it. So right. yeah. So if you want to confuse your friends, change their nickname on <laughs> Facebook. On your chats. Give everybody a nickname. Yeah. Oh goodness. So welcome to our video. I know we've had a few new additions. We we just kind of have a steady stream of a few additions. Mm -hmm. We are in that over 900 and under 1,000 Um subscribers for our floss tube and i'm just like ah we'd also like to welcome back those of you who come back regularly like keisha said we can't believe that there are more than five of you right. <laughs> and your comments have been so great um thank you so much for watching last week while i did my whip parade for february i definitely have a lot of projects that i'm going to go through and you'll see a good chunk of them today mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely. Um, are you ready for some life update? Yeah, sure. So as you maybe have noticed, I've been gone for a couple of weeks. Um, the first week I was gone, I caught COVID. And I'm pretty sure that I got it from uh James's daycare, you know. It's one of those unavoidable things. I mm -hmm. mean, it's, you can really get it from anywhere. And um luckily James was okay. James was perfectly fine. Um, me and my husband, on the other hand, were down pretty sick for a little bit. I mean, we weren't hospitalized. We took, we, we were able to take care of it with over the counter meds, but it was just coughs. My nose was completely congested, you know, just kind of gross. Um, James learned how to climb everything in our house. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard keeping up with a very energetic toddler because of course we kept him out of daycare for the, um, the week that we kind of isolated. My husband and I are both vaccinated. <clears throat> so fortunately, you know, things weren't as bad as they could be. So, um, so we were both sick. And then um, during all of that, my grandmother actually passed away. So I was out for mental health last week. So that's why you got to see the great um, whip parade that you guys seem to enjoy. So, and of course, Lara's whips are great, but um, she passed away. She had been sick for a while, had been on hospice care for a while. So it was um, one of those things that we knew, you know, was coming. And uh, um, I was really, really, really close to her. We uh, just had the funeral service yesterday. So uh, still a little bit fresh. So um Thank you all for understanding that I was gone. And uh, so that's what's been going on with me. James has learned several new words. Um, he's getting really good at telling us what he wants. My mom yes. thought, yeah. oh my goodness. Okay, so um, Laura and Katie are wonderful, wonderful friends who brought me a huge care package that had a lot of food in it. Um, which is funny because I had another friend who sent me food. So I think people just decided I wasn't going to eat. Um, well, you and, know, the, uh, the traditional thing was casseroles, right? But, but you know, there's DoorDash now. So we're just going to get the good stuff. Right. So, um, and it was wonderful. There were all kinds of snacks. There was some stitchy stuff in there. It was really fun. But um, so I, we open up this bag because I opened it with James because he loves to open bags and look at what's in there. And um, there was a bag of pirate's booty, which if you haven't had is kind of like, um, kind of like Cheetos a little bit, um, like a puffed snack that's kind of cheesy. And James- It's in loves. the popcorn section. Yeah, James loves it. And so he, we open up this bag, he sees it immediately, he grabs it and he goes, snacks. <laughs> 
and off he goes. <laughs> <laughs> it was purchased for him. <laughs> yes. And, and I figured <laughs> I told Keisha, when someone has been your nanny and been in your home, they know what snacks you keep in the house. Right. So, so immediately, those were for James. So uh, he's done that. My mom got him a little baby doll because he had been playing with his cousin's baby dolls. And so now he carries it around and goes, baby, baby, Aww. baby. And it has a little pacifier that he can take out of the mouth, but can't get back in. So I've been having to help a lot. So he'll go, pa, pa. And I'll go, do you need some help? And he'll go, help. <laughs> <laughs> so James is good. James is having the best time. <laughs> so He's been very happy to have both parents, right? Yes, yes. We both have to be in every room with him now. <laughs> And um, in my world, you know, we've had, we had snow this week. It was threatened to be up to 19 inches. It was predicted to be between seven and 19 inches. And we ended up with about three. <laughs> uh, the weather pattern shifted just enough that it blew south of us and south and east of us. And so we didn't get the brunt of it, but not very far past us they did get hit much worse than we did so and i know that affected yeah, your plans I, right so. yeah my parents where my parents live they got quite a bit of snow because they are south and east of us mm -hmm. <laughs> so um and then last sunday the chiefs did not play up to their full potential and so we are out of the super bowl but we lost to Cincinnati, who has had an amazing season and who has not been to um, the playoffs or the Super Bowl. I want to say that they said something like 30 or 40 years. And I would they, have to look at it. Won, they? No, I they don't think so. Super Bowl, I don't so. think so. And they beat us. So I am rooting for them to win because they took down number one and number two in our conference and yeah i i just i feel like this is their time so if you don't have a preference then let's all root for cincinnati and for those of you in los angeles i'm sorry <laughs> well the rams were in missouri and then they left us. yes <laughs> they left they left their hearts in st louis and and moved on yeah uh and at my school it's we're just hanging in there we're uh we still have a lot of people out the kids have been great about masking here's the funny thing for me we're doing i work with ell kids so english language learners and we're at a point in the year where we have to do our testing to see if the kids still need to receive services from us and this week we were working on the speaking tests and during the speaking test we don't get to grade those or evaluate those that is recorded directly into yeah, electronically and then it is uh reviewed by the board anyway outside of our district so not by anyone who would know any of our kids so we've been bringing them in just like one or two at a time and separating them in the room they are probably 12 feet apart and because they're all masked, we don't want them to sound like Charlie Brown's teacher. So we tell them, you can pull down your mask when you're recording. It is the hardest thing because they are so good and so diligent about keeping those masks up that we have really had to say, pull your mask down for the next one so they can hear you. I had one little guy who really did not want his mask off, so he took the microphone and fed it in through the side of the mask so that it would be there. <laughs> I was just cracking up, but that you know, I thought, that's really <laughs> great. And it shows you the adaptability that kids have because they're just, you know, they just are doing it. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so we have rambled for quite a bit here already. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to move into some stitching? Yes. Okay, uh, I already have asked you, so I know you don't have a finish this week. And technically, I showed mine last week, but this that was a special extra. And this is a regular floss tube. So I'm going to show you my Christmas garden again. 
that. If I were you, I'd show it every week for the next month. I'd be so proud. <laughs> of you. And mine is from the original booklet. Um, so, and I know it's available in other places too. Mine is stitched on 32 count parchment linen. And this is what it looks like. So beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy with it. It just, I loved working on this and I will miss it. That border was so fun, really. Mm -hmm. um, it was easy to get into a rhythm and just feel like I made really good progress on those days. This was my 25 seven. So on those days where I just didn't have brain power to do it, I would seriously work on the border. Right. <laughs> And it has been with me for a long time now. So it's a little sad that it's finished, but now I'm waiting for the next um, framing sale so that I can take it and get it put in right away and get it framed. And have it up for next Christmas. You bet. It may be up for Christmas in July. Yeah. Who knows? And it should be. It's really a pretty <laughs> I think we're ready to move on to stash. Stash. Okay, well, I did get some wonderful, wonderful stash from Laura and Katie. I got the book Cross Stitch for the Earth from Emma Congdon, and she's one of my favorite designers, so I was really excited to get this. And um, <coughs> I'll just show you inside. There are all of the different wonderful patterns in here. Um, but specifically, I was given it for this one. It says live gently upon the earth. Okay. And will you count the number of flosses for that? Because I was amazed. Yes. So actually I have them all right here. Um, so they got me the flosses too. I need to sort it out because um, one of the dangers of living with James Guthrie is he'll take oh. the, the numbers off. <laughs> so I have two that don't have numbers on them anymore. But so there are seven flosses here. That's all that are in that. That amazes me that she yes. got that much, that so, much. And this there. is one of those, I mean, it's so covered. It's so covered that I can probably just use a piece of white um, linen to do that or white even weave because it looks like the only places that aren't stitched are the white. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm really looking forward to doing that one. She does that with a lot of her patterns in these books. She um, strategically sets them so that where the white shows through, that's what you're using. So if right. you used another color, yeah, it'd have to decide be. you're gonna like it. Yeah. So anyway, I was really, really happy to get this book and I'm excited to do that, to do that project. So <laughs> okay, my stash. You've seen me with these this morning. Yes. My friend Cece Gilmore knit these oh. for me and she knit a pair for Katie and a pair for Athena. We have three different um, colorways so that we can't fight over them. Mine has some sparkle. I don't know if you're seeing that or not. Yeah, there you bit. go. Oh, there, see it? Yeah. These are like the best mm -hmm. things. Um, I would recommend that you get these to stitch with because they keep your hands just warm, but they are out of the way for everything. And these are a shorty fingerless glove uh -huh. so that they, you know, they just stop there. But um, also I've tried, I have some arthritis. We, we all know that. And I've tried compression gloves before and they're just too tight for me. And, and I don't like them. Mm -hmm. This does the same, has the same benefit of keeping my fingers nice and warm. Um, and it's relieving the arthritis pressure during while I'm stitching. So oh, nice. it was great. That's wonderful. What a great gift. Yeah, I loved it. And then my other gift, it's not a gift. I bought this. A gift to yourself. Yes. I'm fishing these things out. You got a couple of tiny little bags. And one of them. I know everybody has shown these, so you guys have all seen these. These are from Almond M&M's, and I got her um, 
her skin conversion flosses. This is like really hard. Here we go. So oh, those wow. are all the gorgeous colors. Those are beautiful. That I have to work with. And from what I've heard, if you look at her website, she gives instructions on how to use this one so that mm -hmm. you don't have a stripy person. Wow. Aren't those fabulous? Those are beautiful. I cannot wait. I'm going to use this on my um, on my United We Stand for mm -hmm. sure, and on other projects. And I'll just be replacing these as I need to because I think it's great to have a resource like that. And I think I'm yeah. keeping them in a little bit. I should yeah, just write good. skin on the outside, right? <laughs> don't let anyone find your skin bag <laughs> <laughs> that would be a little scary right a little bit. <laughs> All right, then i got just some pretty colors because you're on her site and you're looking through and it's like oh my gosh so she writes in the tiniest little writing here this one is bluebell oh very pretty blues and greens really really cool and then I have a solid that is called dried rosemary. This was not a set. These were just ones that I picked up that I thought I would like. Um, this one, <coughs> excuse me, is cotton candy. Oh, that's fun. Is that the prettiest Easterish color? Mm -hmm. I got this to look and see if it's close to the one that we sent in the um, March box last year. Mm -hmm. That was my I'm first wondering. thought about it. Yeah. But also, I thought maybe a couple of these would go with that one from the March box. Then I have powder blue, which is kind of a periwinkle ish color mm -hmm. to me, the color of the year. Yes. And the last one is lilac. Oh, very pretty. I just think they're gorgeous and I can't wait to use them. So fun. Yeah, they really are. That'll be great. And I'm sure that I've gotten other stash. I just couldn't tell you what it is at this point. So that's what happens when we have a gap in the filming. <laughs> yes. And I'm just and normally I keep things we have a bunch of these big Joanne bags and normally I just throw things in one of the Joanne bags until it's time to film and then I unpack it I don't mm -hmm. have anything in there <laughs> so that's the end of that are you Perfect. ready for some whips <coughs> I am oh Katie um, Landis Katie Landis we both Katie Landis this. Katie Landis get your drink I'm feeling much better. I just have like a lingering cough that I found that if I talk too much, it, it kind of comes. So that's what that is. So, okay. I did not stitch a whole lot um, during the time that I've been away because I was sick. And uh, there, so there were a few days where I didn't really stitch at all. So, um, but I will show you, it had been a while yesterday i worked on ah. fun every day i worked on december i didn't really get a whole lot done i was working on this in the car but here's where i am on it so i'm almost Woo done with the stripes here and then it'd just be the green stripes and i'd be done so cool. i'm gonna start working on these again i kind of took january off we both day. did we were yeah. like okay new shiny things right <laughs> So, um, so that's that. And then, um, we haven't filmed in forever guys. So I have been working on ABC dinosaur, which is the, um, yearly Sal from clouds factory. And I finished the first part of it, but the second part has come out. So I've worked on that and I'll just show you real quick. So here's, um, what we've done, what's come out so far. So N and O were the first one, and J and K were the ones that came out this time. And oh, so it was no, and then just kidding. Uh-huh, yep. <laughs> yes. So here's <laughs> here's where I am on it. I finished awesome. the first part, and then um, I've done J, so I need to do K now. 
This is on 36 count Arctic Fox from Fiber on a Whim. And I'm just using one strand. <coughs> I'm doing a little bit of um, changes. So all of the actual, like the dinosaurs are stitched as charted, but the um, names of the dinosaurs that are backstitched there, they're supposed to be all backstitched in white so far, oh. but the white just wouldn't show up on this. I'm using a lighter fabric um, than what it's act is actually called for. So what I've been doing is just picking one of the colors out of the letter. And I've just been using that as the backstitch name because I figured that those would coordinate well. Yes. So that's what I'm doing there. Um, I'm really enjoying this piece. It's, it's one of those, like if I were stitching this for myself, I would probably not pick this out because dinosaurs are cool, but they're just like, you know, I'm not going to put up a dinosaur cross stitch in my front room. But I'm stitching this in the hopes that whenever it's done and James is two and a half, he'll really be into dinosaurs. <laughs> That's the hope. So, um, so I worked on that. And then everything I worked on is a, a PDF. So I have to <laughs> have fun every day. So then I also worked on um, Death by Cross Stitch from Long Dog Samplers. And um, we're gonna do a thousand stitches a month on these. I have done well over a thousand stitches. I did a couple thousand stitches in January, just because wow. this was kind of a nice thing to work on that I didn't really have to think about a whole lot. So here is where I am on it. Wow. And this is on 36 count Adave linen from Zweigert. And I'm just using one strand. I've kind of come up with my own conversion um, of colors. You can see I'm using um, like a crew as some of the uh, accents. And then I'm kind of using that reddish pink there. I forget the DMC number off the top of my head, but I'm using that for all of the hearts in the piece. There are several hearts. Um, so yeah, I got that uh, unicorn done. And whenever you look at the pattern, it looks pretty small, but He's a pretty big guy. So yes. I think it's all misleading. How many stitches are in Death by Cross Stitch? Oh, oh man. I, I don't have my I don't You don't have, have Pattern Keeper in with you. No, I'll let you guys know next time. But I mean it's it's a lot. Um I think such that if I did a thousand stitches a month, it would take me like better than five years to try to finish it mm -hmm. like it's it's a lot of it's a lot of stitches and um this is not even the first page this is as far over as the first page goes but it goes down quite a bit further past where i am so i think yours is bigger than mine so yeah it's a it's a pretty big one but if i mean just to show you i have a, a three inch border i don't even know that i can even get it all in. <laughs> <laughs> it's um uh 27 by 31 so wow it's a it's a pretty big piece of fabric and it's a little overwhelming whenever you unfold it all the way so um and then the last thing i worked on so i have this haid and it's a quick stitch so it's a lot smaller than like your standard thing um that i was working on for my grandma um, I didn't get it done uh, because it's a haid. I never even told her I was stitching it because my intention was for it to be a surprise. Um, but I didn't get it done. So now I'm going to uh, basically have it be like the memorial piece for my grandma. And, and so this can watch you every time you pull it out. Right. <laughs> so this is a quick stitch flying pink picky and it's a, like i said it's a heaven and earth design the artwork is by lisa victoria it is like the and happiest piece on the face of the planet it's the happiest <laughs> pig in the entire world <laughs> and it just makes me laugh and i knew that my grandma would love it she collected pigs and um yeah so i knew that she would get a kick out of it but here's where it is so I'm stitching this um, on a diagonal. The diagonals are 10 stitches across. So I was, whenever I started, because I started um, 
the last Friday I started working on it because she passed on Thursday, um, a week ago from Thursday. I was about right here. So I got all the way down to the bottom of that diagonal there. So this is as far across as it goes, but it still goes down a little ways. So. Okay, you said that you're doing it 10 stitches. So do you mean that you're going horizontally 10 stitches? Yes. So basically, and one of the nice things about Pattern Keeper, if you didn't know that this is a, um, if you use Pattern Keeper and you didn't know, you can actually have it sect it diagonally. Oh. So basically, I went over 10 stitches and then like a diagonal line. So you could see, I mean, you can kind of see where the diagonal is. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just doing it 10 stitches across will be my next diagonal. And then I'll like go down like this. And then I park my threads when, so that's what all of those, uh, the hanging ones are because they're in the next diagonal. So I'll just pick them up whenever I get to that part on the next diagonal. These always, when people are parking, it always reminds me of tapestries where yeah, you're it does look working like on them. Weaving things in, yeah. So, so very cool. Thanks. I really enjoy this, but there are like at least 20 different colors, like in oh. these little parts of the wings. It took me forever to get through that. <laughs> this last time there's like, you know, you work on it for hours and hours and you've only done 200 stitches. Gosh, I understand that's okay. that. That's the full coverage life. <laughs> so, but that's what I've worked on in the past couple of weeks. Okay. Well, since I finished one 25 seven, I had to pull out another one. And my next 25 seven is Our House. Love that. From one. The Good Housewife, which, if you have been with us, this was my focus piece in November. Yes. And I thought I might finish it in November because I was moving along with it. Mm -hmm. I hope I am not shaking you guys too much. My, um, I've set my computer on a rolly cart and it has these lovely trays and I just keep using them. So, yeah. but anyway, I've made some pretty good progress this week. So oh, this is where I am. You really now, have. This week, what I worked on is um, the little house up there on top of the hill. Mm -hmm. And then last night I thought, I really want to get that tree in because I, I'm not excited about putting it in. It's got some fussy stuff to go with it. Right. But is that the most gorgeous tree ever? Yes. I just love that. This piece is so good. I like it so much. Um, and I thought maybe I would really wouldn't want to work on a fall piece, but that has not deterred me. That's good. <laughs> I've really enjoyed it. Um, and then Keisha was working on her long dog and reminded me that, yes, we're supposed to be working on our long dogs. I did not get my thousand stitches in for January, but I got like 783 or something like that. So mine is life after death. Mm -hmm. And I started down here in this corner. And when I um, got in to work on it, mine has 55,470 stitches. Ooh. And I am at 6.83% right now. <laughs> Sometimes um, I, you look at Pattern Keeper and you're like, I don't need to know the percentage. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of fun for me because I was, I don't even know what I was at. And I thought, oh, well, maybe I can get to 6%. And the next thing I knew I was above it. So mm. that was good. But sorry, I'm trying to get down to this corner. Mine is on 40 count antique, antique hydrangea from um r and r there it is wow and look i got the bunny in nice if you've been here before you know i love the rabbits mm -hmm. but i also got that lady in these people coming up the side are so fun yeah that's really fun um the other thing to know about pattern keeper is that it does not put back stitch in Right. So um, 
I purchased this a second time so that I could have it as a PDF and get it on my in pattern keeper. Mm -hmm. um, but I also have a paper copy so that I can work on it so that I can add all the back stitching in. Well, and if you go into where you select your pattern, if you're in pattern keeper, there's a little option down in the bottom right hand corner of the box where it shows your pattern where you can view the PDF. And so you can actually look at the PDF if you're doing back stitching. Um, Cause I know my ABC dinosaur has quite a bit of back stitching and I have that in pattern keeper. And whenever I need to add that, I go in and I look at the PDF. So I can still look at it on my device. Oh, awesome. See, it's a good thing you're telling me these things because <laughs> I don't know these things yet. Um, I also had a, I, this is my snow day project and I finally got it started. It's hibernation day from Heartstring Samplery. And I'm actually kind of doing the um, Stitch the Winter Olympics hashtag that's hosted mm -hmm. by the Naptime Stitcher. No, hosted by, I think it's just Naptime Stitcher, no the in the front. Um, but anyway, if you look for this on Instagram, there are a lot of people doing the Winter Olympics. And the first mm -hmm. one was Stitch Something that you started in 2022. Either start a new project or stitch something you started in 2022. And I thought, oh, perfect, because I had not gotten the latest day of snow stitching in. And now I have. Wow. So I'm loving it. This fabric is um, stonewashed by Seraphim Fabrics and it is 28 count. It's long. I don't know how much I need. I didn't measure it. I did measure side to side. Obviously, I have enough. But um, I just cut that part off because I knew it would be close ish. So, oh, I forgot to mention my flying pink piggy that I'm doing. It's on 25 count linen and I'm stitching it over one. I forgot to mention. Oh, yeah. It is tiny little stitches. Yeah. I, I have this in a love you more sleeve that's dear oh, Miss Austin. Yes. And inside are writings. This is her, her writing. So I didn't tell you guys flying pink piggies in this one. Oh, yeah. All these pigs. And it's sparkly inside. <laughs> you can't really tell too well. Um, but uh they made a matching sleeve for my grandma. And this <laughs> fabric was picked because my grandma would like it. So and the funny thing about the sleeve, are you going to tell this? Uh, no, you can't. You, oh, so um, <laughs> the Love You More sleeves come with a uh, a bookmark or did whatever we got this. And um, my grandma got one. I didn't get one. It was a Hagrid bookmark. My grandma's never read Harry Potter. She doesn't know who Hagrid is, but it was pretty. So she kept it. <laughs> And she didn't want to use it because she wanted it to stay nice, right? Uh-huh. 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 So anyway, this is the pig sleeve. James will look at it and go, pig, pig. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to show you guys that one of our show. <laughs> and we actually bought that fabric because we knew Keisha wanted, she liked pigs because of her grandma. Yeah. So yes, yeah. find out you like something, then, you know, we'll think about you while we're shopping. Right. Right. So yeah, we're not there trying to get you to buy something. We just think about you while we're out. On February 1st, I let Jeff pick a project for me and he wanted to pick a different one. And I said, no, it's a Tuesday. I'm not going to have that much time to stitch. Can I please save that one for later? Mm -hmm. And so he picked this one and I, I am doing this little green one. Oh, okay. However, mine is of course on purple. Well, yeah. <laughs> it is on a piece of 28 count evening song blue linen, which is just a little scrap that I had. Oops, my needle is just dangling. I'm going to <laughs> tuck it in here real quick. And I had the tiniest little start on this, but I managed to get this far. Oh, wow. That is really pretty in person. That The picture doesn't really do it justice at all. I love it. And I am using, I have a ton of the hand dyed fibers, the Vicki mm -hmm. Clayton silks, and yeah. this one is grapevine. And I just think it goes perfectly on this fabric. Yeah. 
So I'm really happy with that. And mm -hmm. I have another scrap of it, which is why I was looking down, which oh, nice. would be big enough for a second one in this color or oh, cool. uh, they suggest that you back them with wool. And I do have some different little wool cuts. I can never mm -hmm. find the right color purple. Right. And you have to get, you know, there's there's green in this. Maybe I'll have to find a green that would go with that. Ooh, that could be fun. That would be really pretty. So, and I, I'm really going to put these away while I go yeah. to. It's so but, interesting to that you're doing this project because I feel like we're getting a good mix of like things that I've never seen before and like, and then like, you know, just favorites of things that you've worked on. It's really, uh -huh. really cool. <laughs> On day two, Katie got to pick. This is one of my very favorite sleeves. Look yeah, at that so boiling and the inside Ooh. is all, oh, I love it. Very this perfect. one is Yule Ball. We don't have it anymore. It sold fast. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Hummingbeat Heaven from Just Nan. I'm gonna scoot in real close. I may, when I am done, go back and stitch this. Mm -hmm. Um, if you ever stitched a Just Nan, you know that they come with pages of instructions. This is everything that you have to know. So oh, this is all the floss and how you use it all. Oh, wow. And then these are all the instructions by band. And mm -hmm. then let's make sure I go the right way here. And then there are stitches listed also. Wow. So this is a very involved piece. It's nice that they give you all of those instructions though. Yes, it's laid out. I mean, it, there's a lot to it and it can look a little intimidating, but seriously, it's step-by-step. Step. Yeah. This one I believe is a, it's either a 28 or a 32 count platinum cashel, a platinum linen. Mm -hmm. And that's what I got done. I was on wow. this goose row which mm -hmm. is seriously all confetti. Wow. And I had the geese in and oh. I think one color, but I put all the rest in and then I did this band and I've started up here. These little strawberries are like Swedish weaving. Oh, wow. So I think there are four more, five more across there. Mm -hmm. But my time was, I had to go to bed. Yeah. I have oh, to work. I had to go to bed. <laughs> I've never done Swedish weaving. <laughs> that sounds so interesting. <laughs> um, I have it. I was trying to see if I had any of my, it's on my, some of my Blackbird. No, some of my Shepherd's Bush samplers. Oh, gotcha. And if I think about it, oh yeah, it is on that one. Mm -hmm. um, if you remind me next time, I'll pull it down and I will show that because it's really a cool technique. Yeah. Then it's just got, amazing what you can do with floss and a needle, right? Yes. Yes. I got down to day three and Brie chose, <clears throat> excuse me, she pulled out morning blossom. Oh, wow. I originally sent this around in a round robin. So this is a world traveler to places mm -hmm. that I have never been. And um, it has been stitched on by some lovely people. I'm doing mine on 32 count apple blossom linen mm -hmm. by Witchell. This is one of my favorite colors. It is the best neutral. It's really pretty. And it's not like in your face pink, but it is yeah. a nice warm pink. And I'm loving this. I filled in the hair on the baby mm -hmm. and I don't know, a little more here and there. So that was an evening. It's, nice. it's another confetti heavy piece, which is probably why you don't see it as often from me because I really have to be committed to the idea that I'm going to do that. Right. Right. What I'm finding with, um, with working on these projects is that I'm really willing to pull them out for a good serious stitching session for one day. A yeah. lot of them I really want to go back to, Right. but I really, I don't know. I've not 
gotten rid of that many of my projects. So I do still like them. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say there are definitely like some projects that you have to be in like the right headspace for like things that take a lot of concentration, like confetti or specialty stitches. Like you can't just, I, I mean, at least for me, I can't just pull out that piece. I have to be like, okay, I have time. I'm going to pay attention to this. It's not like, like the um, fun every day where I don't really have to pay a whole lot of attention because it's just like, you know, pretty solid stitching. Right, so. right. Um, on Friday, I grabbed this sleeve, mm -hmm. another one that I'm just like, oh, I like that. And that's how they're choosing. Everything is in its home and they're just reaching in and getting one. Oh, fun. But I pulled Baltimore salt box sampler oh, nice. by Brenda Gervais with my needle and thread. Mm -hmm. And I love this thing. Mm -hmm. um, Katie Landis started hers on this beautiful piece of fabric. And I had a piece also, mine's going to be way bigger than what I need, yeah. but I only had the red, the red line. I had all of the tree trunks, but I only had, I can't remember if I had one of the trees or two of the dark green trees, mm -hmm. but I put in the other ones and I put in the olive colored trees. Oh, how fun. And the blue stars I've started. Nice. Love this piece. Did not want to go to bed. I wanted to keep stitching because I knew it was going away. Right. And I have that feeling a lot, which really is encouraging to me. Yes. It means you like what you have. <laughs> yes. So then yesterday I picked up what I told Jeff that I couldn't work on the first day. But I'm going to see what you know, Keisha. It's in this bag. Oh, oh gosh, I know that bag. This is Show what I got me. when I asked Judy for a purple bag. Yes, I need to see like the corner of the fabric, then maybe I'll get it. Of the fabric? Uh huh. Oh, okay, maybe I don't know. I was thinking of something else. As soon as you show it to me, I'm gonna be like, of course it is. Oh, oh yeah. I'm showing you November because I think that's where I'm stopping. I don't think I'm putting December on this. And I am really excited because I am on the August band. If I can get my finger this far, August band is right here. Oh, wow. So you're so close. Yes. Yes. I mean, it's all relative. This thing is 205 stitches wide by 467 stitches high. Right. <laughs> and I've been working on it. I can't remember if I finally got my fabric in 2017 or if I had to wait until 2018 to start it, but um, it's been in the works a long time. And I would love for this to be the year. This is mine. I'm gonna go slow because it's big. Yes. Ah, oh, so good. And look at this. I have one more box to put wow. the stem in. 82 stitches. So see each one of these, each one of these is 82 stitches. Oh, wow. And if you think about how long it takes you to do that. Yeah. Uh, and I'm thinking, I think Katie told me to use this blue from this mm. band to do the tops of the flowers. They're kind of carnation looking. Yeah. If you have thoughts on what color I should use, look up here, uh, look through the piece, yeah. then you can put those in the comments below. Right. This is, piece has just been so fun just to figure out where you're gonna put all of the different colors as you go down. It's been yes. really fun. Uh, this is on a piece of 32 Count Carol's Meadow from um, Silk Weaver mm -hmm. and I had a little piece and I contacted them and said, hey, do you still make this? I'd really like to have a big piece so that I can do this. Mm -hmm. And then um, at that point I was in the um, Victorian Motto Sampler Shop Floss of the Month Club. Mm -hmm. And I was just getting all this beautiful, beautiful floss. 
and had no clue what I was going to do with it. When I um, finally started pulling everything for this, I thought, oh, that'll be perfect because I had seen someone else. I can't take credit for the top. I had seen someone else post showing that they had done um, all of the, the fun colors at the top. Mm -hmm. And I pulled my Victorian mottos and just went with the colors that I wanted to work with. Nice. So that's what I worked on yesterday. Today, Katie Landis will get to pull another one and uh, we'll see what I'll be working on. If you're new, Katie Landis is the drinking game. So if you'll notice every time we say Katie Landis, we take a drink. <laughs> so. And I finished my coffee, so I am on to water. Nice. Um, do you want to talk plans? Sure. <laughs> so I really, really scheduled my January and a lot of things happened to me in January. <laughs> and so I didn't really get a lot of my goals accomplished. And what I'm finding is right now, I just kind of want to stitch on whatever I want to stitch on. I scheduled myself too much. And so I'm just kind of going with whatever feels like something I'd like to work on. Um, and so sometimes if you've gotten a little derailed, it's better to just let yourself fully derail and yeah. then just move forward and make progress. Yeah. Which, so that's kind of what I'm doing. <laughs> I feel like you're never thrown off by that. Yeah. You know, that you're, you're very, okay. So yeah, I'm going to adapt. I'm going to do something else right. and you don't beat yourself up over it. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, it's good to have goals, but at the end of the day, it's a hobby. And so if it's stressing me out, then it's not a hobby anymore. Um, so I will probably continue to work on ABC dinosaur because I only have one more dinosaur left and that's very exciting. Um, and, and I then, know you want to keep up with that one. Yes. And because I've become woefully behind on Maple Lane from Frosted Pumpkin. <laughs> the last part of it just came out um, on the 5th, or so I guess that was yesterday. Maybe it was Friday that it came out. Um, so I'd like to try to catch up on that. I don't know that I will um, this, this next time. You have until so, next fall. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. So um, I'm gonna work on ABC Dinosaur. I might work on more, more on fun every day because I enjoyed working on that yesterday. And then, I'm just gonna kind of see whatever I feel like. I might stitch some more on Death by Cross Stitch. I may stitch some more on that Flying Pink Piggy, just, you know, if the mood strikes me on that one. So my husband uh, joked that it was probably gonna take me the next 10 years to finish it <laughs> because I started um, a memorial piece for my grandpa after he passed away and I get too emotional when I work on it. So I really only work on it for like a day at a time every, little bit so he's like yeah you'll probably be working on that for the next 10 years i'm like you're probably right <laughs> you'll have to pull them both out together and you can work an hour on grandpa's and then when you get too sad then you'll you'll just have to pull grandma's out because it'll make you laugh that's true that's true i gotta get down uh i think in the next diagonal i get to the great big pig smile so oh. i just gotta touch that pig smile <laughs> that will be awesome yes so um, what about you this is what I was talking about. Stitch the Winter Olympics. Uh -huh. And it does say down at the bottom, it is the nap time stitcher. You can oh, see okay. that down there. Yes. But these are the different prompts for every day. You could catch up because we're not that far into it. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to yesterday stitch something related to winter. Oh, but I was moving along so well on um on my mystery sampler my linen and threads that i didn't move on yeah well i so the first day was to stitch on something that you st started in 2022 uh -huh. i was working on abc dinosaur and then yesterday i was working on fun everyday december uh awesome so you're so, on the notes pictures <laughs> right <laughs> so um my friend judy and i we stitch on quaker christmas we try to stitch on it every month on the 25th January 25th, I was almost done. I was smelling the end of Christmas garden. I did not pull it out. Yeah. So Judy and I went through and had a discussion about these prompts and we can make it fit 
almost all of the prompts. Oh, wow. Yes. So I'm going to try and do um, at least an hour on it every day for one of mm -hmm. these prompts if I can. Today, I will do two hours and I'll call one of those hours yesterday and I'll call one of them today. This is what it looks like, a Quaker Christmas from Bygone Stitches. Such a Not pretty. taking it out of the plastic. I stitch right to left. I So I started over here and I have gotten all the way to this corner, you'll see, oh, wow. and I'm up in here. Yeah. And it's kind of diagonal across there, just wherever the motifs ended. Mm -hmm. But, and I'm using, um, oh, what is my linen? It's a 36 count Weeks Dye Works linen. I want to say it's beige. And I'm using Carrie's Creations Blosses, which she was still dying at the time. She was still dying floss at the time. And I contacted her and she came up with one of her oops greens. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm using. So, I know Keisha loves this because it's green. Yeah, well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and because it's a pretty piece. <laughs> but you also use little touches of gold and little touches of red throughout the piece. Yes, it's such a good one. I love it. It's mm -hmm. just gorgeous and you can see i made it to the corner so that's how wide it will be so actually look at this i have a project that is not playing border chicken <laughs> that's always good news <laughs> um christmas garden I, i'm only going to speak this once at the bottom there's this much room mm -hmm. on one side the other side is completely fine but when it was cut it went up and partway up, I have about this much room. Oh, no. Our framer is fabulous. And I believe that she will do fine. She has said about other projects, oh, if I feel like it's too close, I'll just sew some muslin on it. Oh, that's nice. And I would frame that one fairly close anyway. Mm -hmm. so I'm not too worried about it. Um, also, this month for Whipco, I'm sorry, there is a hair fighting me hard oh, gosh this month for whipgo i got uh two and 19 were the no is that right five and 17 are the numbers for this month and one of those is katie landis picks mm -hmm. and she chose anniversaries of the heart for me which i am still on january mm -hmm. I will not get to this until after I've done all of them. I was trying to see real quickly. They don't ever show it all together in here. But I have this much done. And I'm using 36 or 40 count ale from Picture This Plus. Wow, that's so pretty. I just never pull it out. Part of it was that um, I really needed to be working in a hoop. It was starting to bother me. Yeah. Um, so I think this plus it, is so tight. Yes. So having it in a hoop will be a lot better. I have stitched on it a little bit in the hoop and I like that. Mm -hmm. um, then the other number that's drawn is work on the monthly whip closest to a finish. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get all the way through all of my whips for the month before I decide which one is closest to a finish. Yeah. Nice. The one that you saw today, Quaker pin cushion, that could be finished. And my goal is 500 stitches when I am stitching on those. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that finished up. I, well, I counted well, and I think it would be slightly over 500. It, it'll be somewhere right around there, but right Not but i know while. you whatever you get close to a finish you're gonna do it anyway <laughs> yes that would be it yes uh and i would love to get i don't know that i'll get back to death by cross stitch this week or life after death i'm sorry this week just because um i'm trying to work on those i'm trying to work on my 25 7 and i'm trying to work on my daily whip yes. and give it a really good that one is 
more kind of a loose goal. I'd like to hit at least 500 stitches, but it's mm -hmm. kind of an all evening type thing. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Today, weekends where I have more time, that's that makes a little different, mm -hmm. a little difference. Yeah. I also wanted to talk a hot minute about the Black Needle Society. Oh, yeah. Because we sent out our newsletter and we announced that we are in fact having an in-person retreat it is camp black needle society it will be august 4th through 7th this year and the sign up it'll be here in missouri it'll be an in independence at the stony creek hotel which is a beautiful facility mm -hmm. um and it it really kind of fits our camp theme yeah so that should be fun um this coming week on the 9th, it will be open to current subscribers for purchase. And then on the 10th, it is open to everyone. It is, oh, I would have to have Katie yelling at me. I believe it is $230 yes. for the retreat. And um, we do have a limited number of spaces. We have a lot of spaces, but we have a limited number. And they will be on a first come first serve basis. And then we haven't discussed whether we're taking a waiting list and how we're doing that. I'm sure we'll discuss that later today. <laughs> and the $230 uh, price gets you two fully kitted uh, projects from the Black Needle Society. Katie Landis, great designer. You'll love them, I'm sure. And a, a t-shirt from Stitching Goddess Designs, right? Yes, if you're Those at the in-person event, yes. Mm -hmm. So, and, and then of course, a box of just wonderful, wonderful swag that is over the cost of what you're actually paying for the retreat. <laughs> so just let me be your salesperson. <laughs> I can tell that Keisha read her newsletter. <laughs> I read the newsletter. I'm very excited about it. Also, that is the weekend after my birthday. So if you want to come and like celebrate my birthday and um, James may make an appearance. He might come to the room at some point. If you have, if you have to be sold on coming, you should just. <laughs> oh, it. Uh, we're really looking forward to it. We're so excited about it, and we're hoping that you know the trends stay where they are. We know what the capacity of the room is, and we are not booking to full capacity. We're going to be booking under that so that we feel like we have a little more wiggle room. Right. you know to space people out a little bit more so and i know that you guys are really serious about covid safety and everything like that everyone will be as safe as possible yes i'm sure yes and we just think it's going to be such a good time we're so excited talking about it planning it thinking about what we want to do dreaming it all up and yes. it'll be fun it'll be fun yes, fun fun <laughs> But that is what I have for today. Do you have anything else? Nope, that's all I have. And now I'm all excited about the retreat. I was thinking about this the other night. I was like, ooh, I'm so excited. Gotta sign up on the ninth. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's about all the shenanigans that we can get up to. And we have rambled quite a bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. This will be a long one. Yes, yes. And that is our cue to not have a long Midwest goodbye. So we're just going to say happy stitching. Hi, have a good week. <laughs> <laughs>